Yeah, so. All right, so what you see on the screen right here is, is just a basic script, right? This is the script that, this is the script that TD Ameritrade just gives you. Like, so you can pick it as a study. Now, when you see Dorian script, Dorian script is gonna be so more intense than what you see here. But this is a basic script that you can just go grab from TD Ameritrade and they do have it labeled and we'll show everybody how to get there. Uh, Dory has a video step-by-step step on how to get there. We can get that out to you. Uh, but basically what you see here is I'm, tell, I'm, I'm telling my computer to define in a squeeze and send me an alert. And what it will do is plot every time that there's five red dots in a row, it gives me an alert that that stock is going to move. Now, what it doesn't tell me is whether it's going to move up or down. But the other indicators that we stack on top of this will allow us to see it. And so I'll go back to the screen and I'll just pull up a stock that, that I own a lot of and I'll show you. Oh, matter of fact, let me see. Over here, I can see. Hold on, let me do it this way. All right. Uh, so what fired yesterday? So let's just go here. We'll just take, we'll take Shopify as an example. There, there's plenty and I'm gonna show you this. So let me go back, try to find a clear, okay. All right, so if everybody can see my screen, right? And so we got the script to, to let us know five dots, but the script from TD Ameritrade, it may have six dots or seven dots, but what it, what it will always show you is those red dots indicate a consolidation period. And so right here on the screen, and we'll, and we'll count the dollars on this, right? So we have one red dot, two red dots, three red dots, four red dots, five red dots, six red dots, seven red dots, and then bam, it basically fire, it fired off, right? And so that morning, let me see right here. And if you all look right here, wherever you put your cursor, it'll tell you what date and what time that, that happened. So if, if I put my cursor right here, so if I move this around, you'll see this number up here move, right? But it's also important to understand that when you see, when I place that on, a, when I place that on one of these, uh, one of the marks here, you can see that that, was, that happened at 8.23 at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Everybody see that? It's, it's kind of important to know like when things happen, right? So that's pre-market. We know that that's pre-market. So what also happened, so we, we continue to go and we say, okay, this, this is indication that this thing is going up. We also use these five red dots or six red dots in this case, but we also use this MAC histogram and that you can see that it's all above zero. It's all positive energy. So you, you, have, you have all these green, air, these green bars that are above, above, above the zero. And you also have it moving. So make sure I'm not jumping around too much on you all, but. Excuse me, uh, Dallas, you said above the zero, you're talking about where the last red dot was? Um, so all these green boys right here okay, are I'm below. So, so you have zero, one, gotcha. two, and then below that will be negative one, negative, you know, negative one, negative two. Mm -hmm. They were all a po in a positive above the, uh, above zero. And, and what it does is it just shows you that there's positive energy going upwards. So we have a momentum indicator basically that's telling us to support what the TTM squeeze is telling us. So we have the Endorians, like I said, when you see his, his is way more complicated. And like, I, I wanted to show this one because I knew that this one had not been uh, modified at all. This is the regular TTM squeeze right out of the uh, playlist from uh, TD Ameritrade. The one that Dorian got, it's, it's, it, it's similar, but it, it is a little bit more complicated. And I think once you see it, you may wanna convert yours to make it look like his. Um, I use this one because this, was, this is what I kind of started with to kind of teach myself about it. But as you can see, this thing is starting to go upward, but it, it, we came out of a consolidation period. And once it started turning green, this thing started moving upward. This MACD histogram kind of supported it. 
And if you go through the day, and I'll just slide this bar at the bottom here, hold on. And as you go, you can see that, that the momentum got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so, it, and, and, and remind you to look up here. If you look up here on the day, it'll tell you the date and time that this happened. So as this started to fire even more, that was, that was at uh, 824, eight o'clock. So that's 30 minutes before the open, no matter you know, what time zone you're in. Then this this second green bar was a was the was another indicator that hey this is about the this thing is about to turn positive. Well, that happened at eight fifteen. That's also pre market, but right at the market open at eight thirty on the same day that same morning, this thing had showed so much potential that it was going up that anybody that was going to buy a call that day, they knew exactly what they were looking at. They, they knew some people bought the call back here when it fired before it gave a real true direction. But once it started trading over the, um, this is the 89 day moving average. Once it hit that, they started loading up the calls. The calls started loading up. People started buying calls because everything that they were looking at showed that the stock was going to move in an upward direction. And then it actually on at 8.30 on the 24th, it actually just took off. And what I wanted to show you is that these indicators here, let me see. We stack these expert, part of this TTM squeeze, right, is stacking your uh, moving, the exponential moving averages. And you will see the eight, the 21, the 34, the 55 and the 89. And I gave Gerald a formula. So those numbers are just not random numbers. Uh, eight plus 13 is 21. 13 plus 21 is 34. 34 plus 21 is 55. And 55 plus 34 is 89. And so that's how this gentleman who created this uh, came up with those numbers. So if everybody do the math, that's that's kind of why those exponential averages got picked. So it just it's just not a random exponential moving average. And what he teaches when you look up some of these videos for the TTM squeeze is that once once you get these indicators below, all pointing, all supporting what you're seeing, and you're trading above those exponential averages, the that's that's all that's all positive momentum. That basically you're you're currently in a bull market. Is what they call it. Does anybody need me to repeat anything? Does everybody see all the, once this thing popped, it just started trading above all these averages. And once it broke out of that zone, it was in an upward trajectory. But what Dorian is about to show you when he enters a trade and when he exits a trade, my personal opinion is I would have got it once it came out of this red, out of this red dot consolidation is where actually is where I went in to, to buy my call. So I kind of bought it prematurely because it really didn't fire until, well, what day was this? 823. So this thing really didn't fire until the next day at the, at the open or pre pre open, but I got in my call and I do this a lot. I'll get in a call once I got positive green bars and it fires and I get three consecutive light blue bars. Once I get that indication, I'm, I'm purchasing calls at that point. Some people will wait till they get, they get all these indicators in the line before, before they, before they purchase a call. I kind of, I kind of go right in after these dots, these red dots, and then I get three of these light blue bars that's showing that momentum. And then I get these green bars below that's also supporting that momentum. That's where I enter mine. A lot of people may not enter there because it really hasn't shown enough. It hasn't shown enough of its face. And what Gerald likes to say is, you know, in the past, you know, some, some, some stocks may pump fake it at that point and, and, and may, it may go back into a consolidation period. Uh, I'll show you 
uh, one that I just, this is the, let me see. This is the one that I made a little bit of money on. So let me go back here, get out of there. How much you make on that one, D? Uh, don't hide it, don't hide it, divide it. Who asked that question? <laughs> the masked man. <laughs> the masked man. Yes. Tell the folks, so, we all family, we all family. Um, so I, I had bought, so you, you all see these red dots? Yeah. So like, like, and what Dorian is going to show you, like they, they're, his is way different, right? And like I said, I'm only showing you this one because this is the one you can pick right out of, right out of, right out of the drop down TD Ameritrade. So when this happened, um, I've been studying this in my class, these, the, uh, these bars and, you know, the hanging man and all that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. But what, what, uh, what is also teaching me is um, once I see these indicators, I kind of really, I kind of really believe in them. And so I've been doing it. And so just uh, what day was this? Was it Tuesday? No, it was, I think it was after that. Hold on. Huh? The 19th? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the 19th. So I did, I did get in there. Um, I got, I got in uh, right here. And once it came out of this consolidation period, I didn't buy, I didn't buy, I didn't buy. Once I got this third, this third, this third blue bar though, I bought and I bought heavy. I think I did like 20 something contracts. And so once, once that thing peaked, I got, once it got right here, I got out. And when I got out, it was like a $6,000 profit. And I did that twice. That's nice, man. That's real nice. And uh, and this thing is this thing has been really it's been really accurate. Um, and there was another one. Hold on. And I have I have all these like Ultra Beauty, um, Nvidia. I have all those on my on my watch list. Um, as you as you can see right here, and like I said, I use mine a little bit different than Dorian and uh, Gerald. But like right here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now, from the conversation that we just had, everybody know. Now it was still in the red dots, but it and I didn't and I and I I stayed true to my word, right? As long as those red dots are there, I'm not I'm not I'm just watching it at that point because I know once those red dots those red dots are telling me that it's a, it's in a consolidation period, and the consolidation period really is just the stock is just trading sideways. It's not doing a whole lot, right? There's, there's volume there, but there's no movement. The stock is just trading sideways. But once I got these three red dots and it turned back blue on me again, I still held my ground, right? I'm, 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 I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And then it gave me some more red dots. So I was like, okay, this thing trading back sideways again. But then it's, it gave me one, two, three, four, five. But everybody that just heard me say, they can tell you when Delos went in. As soon as I got one, two, three of those light blue bars, I bought right then. And so if I go right up, I bought right here, 8.20 at 10.15 a.m. I purchased 20 more, 20 more contracts. As the, as the day went on, I kind of watched it, and that's when I started setting my alerts, right, to catch it when it come back down. So I got in, I got in the trade after my third bar, bam. I watched this thing go and I just kept, kept going, kept going, kept going. And right as I got this first, see when it start changing blue like this, it's starting to lose steam. And that, that, that means that the stock price is kind of coming down again. As soon as that, as soon as I got right to this red bar, I got out for a nice, another, another nice big profit. 
but I use these red dots and these green bars as momentum. And as you can see, as I got out, this is turning dark blue and this turned red. So I kind of got out right in time, but then guess what happened? I got out and as the, and as the next day came, it, 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 it went up just a little bit more, but as you might have seen in my indicator, I also will talk about this. I put a, I got a TTM scap alert. If you, if you can add that TTM scap alert to your study, then you'll also get these little white arrows and these little white arrows will pop up telling you to buy and telling you when to sell. It's called TTM scap alert. If you add that to all these other indicators, along with your exponential moving averages, and as you can see, it's this stock started trading above all of the averages. And when they stack like that, and it's trading above all those averages, that's an indication that the stock is, is, is moving in an upward direction. And as you can see right here, it gave one little indicator and these bars started getting tall. These are green. Some people got in right here. Some people got in at the bottom. And when you read a green bar, you read a green bar from the, from the, from the bottom up. You read a red bar from the top down. So people did get in right here at 370.22, and they got out at 374.67. And then even if they held on to it, the scalp alert told them, hey, you want to get out of that. Is that everybody, everybody saying that? And so I wanted to pull this up. So this is being recorded. You can come back, and these are and 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 these are all the exponential moving averages that I'm using. Hey, love. What time frame was that? You can use so. Um, you I'm using a one day, fifteen minute chart. And I'm going to let Dorian talk his piece because I think he's using multiple days. His is much more, I would, I would say his is, to me, Dorian's maybe, it's a lot more, but you just copy and paste. If you do everything Dorian tell you to do, you can get the same view that he has. So the hard work, the heavy lifting has already been done. All you guys got to do is just follow his lead and, uh, Actually, I'm going to let him go ahead and talk because this is being recorded, right? So we can ask questions later. But it's a phenomenal thing that uh, him and Gerald kind of found out, right? So this didn't come from me. This actually came from them. So I just used it in a different way. And so I just wanted to give you the, the, uh, the, just the base of it and where it came from and how it's used. But I'm going to let Dorian go so he can kind of get into the real nuts and bolts of it. But... Um, when Dorian's done, I just want to share too, real quick, um, how I set up my watch list. So if anybody want to copy that script, they're more than welcome. I'll just show that at the end because it's only going to take a few minutes. So Dorian, I'm going to stop sharing, man, and uh, let you have at it. All right, man. Definitely did a great job breaking that down because... Like you said, mine is a little bit more intuitive, but that's just because I've done so much back testing with this thing. Like when I find something, I like to know how it works. And when I found out that you can add script on it because I you know, do websites and stuff, I was like, oh, that's my language. And I'm predominantly a Forex trader, but when I saw the potential of this and how much you can make and how quickly it can, it can happen, that caught my ear. And the fact that I can go right to exactly what I'm looking for rather than in Forex, you know, I got to search through a couple pairs before I finally get to what I want. So, um, and just to let y'all know, I'm, I'm looking at, at this bigger screen. I have a, a wide screen that I look at because I, I trade multiple time frames at once to see the whole bird's eye view. But um, let me go ahead and share my screen so y'all can see exactly what, what I got going on. Um, all right, there we go.
All right, can everybody see uh, this wide screen? Yeah, I can, I can yep. see it. Okay. So this may be something that you want to um, screenshot because um, what I found with multiple different instructors all over YouTube and even a guy um, that created this, uh, John Carter, um, he even um, co-signed on, you know, the biggest things that he looks out for. So for you, um, don't, don't let this intimidate you. Um, it's a lot of information. Yes, a lot of different colors and stuff. Um, at first, I was kind of deterred because I'm like, I'm never going to get this, but follow your rules. Don't deter because I got beat up by this thing just going against the grain, thinking that, you know, my, my rules at Forex or my old rules of um, trading would pertain to this. And not to say that it won't, but um, one thing that stuck out with me that John Carter said about this is it's about positioning rather than a perfect entry. So uh, what I found is it's all about patience uh, because I trade on a higher time frame. So seeing that like um, a move may fire off on a, on a daily candle, it may dip down a little bit but it'll um, eventually come back up, maybe like two, three days later, sometimes that same day. So what we're finding is to do maybe um, the next week expiry, if it's later in the week, like today, if I put in a trade, I'm doing next week because I'm doing daily calls, um, especially for accounts that's under 25,000. If you can't day trade like that, go ahead and swing, swing some calls um, or puts however you wanna trade. But um, what I found is these are like the, the golden, um, uh, steps that you want to follow or at least check off when you're before you even hit call or put so is your stock in a squeeze on a daily time frame or a higher time frame if you're somebody that that wants to swing let it be like a four hour or up you know what i'm saying uh, me personally it, just because of john carter and um another lady that we found this um this um strategy from they trade off the daily so is it in a daily time frame uh, for at least five red dots. And everybody says five. I've seen other people say three. I just go with what's been successful. So five red dots or more. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, are your EMA stacked? So um, Delos went over the fact that, um, you know, we're trading off the eight, 21, 34, 55, 89. And these hold so much value, especially on a higher time frame. Um, is, is definitely something important that you want to pay attention to. And we'll come back to uh, some of those um, EMAs like the 21 and the 34, those are like those launch pad um, EMAs, which is what we like to call it. Uh, third one is price at or above the, the 21. And I'll show you what that looks like. And it's the squeeze histogram, the wave, and the, not the mom line, but the Momo, um, momentum line. Is that all bullish? So it's these things that you want to keep in mind before you even hit call or put, right? Um, and then another thing that um, John Carter, Dr. B, and a lot of other instructors have found is that these run for at least eight to 10 candles after it fires. So you'll see, um, once I show the screen, um, once you get a red, I mean, once you get a green dot, um, a lot of them go for a lot more, but you'll get that, that spike. You'll get that heavy volume, that, that out of the ordinary push for at least eight to 10 candles. So it depends on where you're looking at these rules to apply. So if I'm on a daily time frame, um, I'm looking for at least eight to 10 days. That's why I say if you're trading and it's Thursday, um, you're not going to want to put that expiry for Friday, the next day. You know what I'm saying? You may want to do the week after that or maybe two weeks. So it just depends on where you're looking at. Um, and I've made the mistake of um, finding, my, finding my entry on like an uh, hour time frame and setting my expiry, setting my expiry too long and waiting out the trade, thinking that it's going to continue to go up when really it was only going to do it for about eight hours. So I've earned a lot of money and also lost a lot of money with this thing. So it's like I've been playing. Um, it's like I've been profitable and then I'll lose it and get profitable, lose it because I've just been I've, I've been putting in all of this work on a live account, which I shouldn't have been been doing, <laughs> but um, you know, it's taught me a lot, especially with um, handling my emotion. When when your when your live emotion is involved, um, it teaches you a different set of discipline. So, um, no, I don't recommend trading live with this, especially if you're new. 
Um, but definitely uh, back test as much as you can. If you're not going to take a call, just write it down, try to log it, uh, get you a, a journal and start writing these things down for each one. And you'll start to see what works for you. Because the reason I've made so many of these scans and different setups was because I was trying to figure out what type of TTM squeeze trader I was. We're all different. We all have different, um, you know, work schedules and things like that. So getting here, kind of play around. But for the most part, a lot of the hard work is done for you. Um, so just to get into some examples, or let me show you what you're looking at. So this top screen, of course, is price. These are my EMAs, the ones that we just talked about. Eight, 21 is blue, white is 34, yellow is 55, red is 89. So you can see these all sitting on top of each other. That means it's stacked. And if you're still unsure about that, if you're stacked, because sometimes it can be like this. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Sometimes they can kind of be jumbled up and you're like, am I stacked? Am I not stacked? Just look up to the top left. If that um, green button is or that green label is lit up, it says stack EMAs. It'll turn red when they're not stacked. So that's a dead giveaway. Um, another thing that you're looking at right here is um, these different time frames in different colors. This first um, space represents um, your squeeze. So what color is the squeeze, which are these dots down here? These are those dots I was talking about. Is it in a five dot squeeze? So this came out of a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably even more if I scroll. So yeah, it's, it's definitely had at least five minimum um, red dots before it fired. Fired means we finally get a, a green dot and it's in the direction that we're looking for. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you, wait until these are stacked, but that's, it's kind of on you. Like Yellow is showing you, um, he just waits for like that second one from what I saw. He, he waited for that second one, which um, is what this script I'm using shows. So my script shows, um, send me a stock with all my other conditions that I'll show you, but send me the stock that just fired two, um, two bullish histogram bars uh, in, a, in the direction I'm looking for. So you'll find these stocks that have these customized um steps already in, implemented in so you won't have to search all you'll be looking for is other conditions to meet your criteria but say you did take that trade after it fired say you say you're like um you know i got the first one but i want to wait until i get the second one so cool you get the second one um and then look what happens it just it takes off now mind you this is on a hour time frame this happens on every time frame the conditions are all the same it all just it just depends on um what what you're looking for you know what i'm saying so if you if you're taking us on an hour time frame know that you can only hold this for about eight to ten trading hours before you pull out a lot of people want to hold it and that's fine but again stay stay disciplined until you see how these things move um so you could have waited until it got stacked which was around this area and we can see that it's in a squeeze, it shows us that it's consolidating. It doesn't show it referenced via the dots, but we see based off of the previous squeeze, um, all of this energy that led up, that is still gonna continue up. Um, another, the second part to this label up here, this shows the histogram bars, which are these um, bars right here. So on the TTM squeeze right out the bat, it will show like cyan, yellow, red um dark blue things like that i customize mine to be white up gray means weak bullish um bright red means um there it is so bright red means heavy bearish and then dark red means weak bearish um i have my momentum line back here uh this second this second label under this ttm squeeze that you saw delos was using um this is the same thing. It's the TTM squeeze, but this is the pro version. And this pro version shows a little bit more of um, a detailed squeeze. So what you're looking at with these red, I mean, these orange dots, these show a very tight squeeze. So that means that we're approaching the end of this squeeze. When I see an orange dot, I already know it's about to be go time. It's definitely about to, it's definitely about to unleash. So I just wait until these 
kind of pair up. The black dot means a weak squeeze. The red is the original squeeze. And then the orange means um, uh, a very tight squeeze, meaning that we're approaching the end of the squeeze before it finally re uh, releases the energy. So we see that it didn't release right here. And also here is still in a squeeze above it. But look what happens when we first uh, get this um, squeeze that fired. It also matches up with this one, even though it shows that it's a weak um, squeeze, it still matches to show that um, that it's about to fire. So you could you could have took it here or you could have waited until they both lined up right here when this price finally got above these EMAs. So it's all about how you want to trade it. And this third label down here or this third level is um, the TTM wave, which is also um, a free indicator that you can get coming into TTM, uh, not TTM, but thinkorswim. All you do is right click, um, you go to studies, add study, and you'll see it under John Carter studies. TTM squeeze, that's the, um, that's the, the free version, the trend. Um, I think uh, Della said you can do the scalp alert and it shows those white dots, I mean, those white arrows. So I haven't played with that one yet, but that's definitely about to be my next one. Um, but that trend is also another thing that you can wait for for confluence. Trading is all about confluence. The more things that come together, the better. So you could have waited until all of these things um, squared up. So let's pull up our rules and you can see how that played out. So looking over here, um, is the stock in a daily time frame or at least five red dots or more? Say you're the one that, that's like, you know, I don't want to do it on a daily. I want to trade on an hourly. Fine. So is your hourly in at least um, did it come out of uh, a five dot squeeze or more? Of course it did. Look at all of these here. So it's out of the five dot squeeze. Are the EMA stacked? Yes, they're stacked. Um, is price at or above the 21? The 21 is right here. Um, and here's another thing with this. Um, with, the, with all this confluence, sometimes it won't exactly be right at the 21. Sometimes it's hovering right above that eight. That's also a great entry. Like I said, it's also about positioning. It's not, it's not always about um, the perfect entry. Now you can, once you get better, find these, these better entries. But for the most part, if you're a conservative trader, you're looking for price to kind of be close to that, that EMA, that first one, at least that eight. Um, and then we just go down the line. Is the squeeze histogram bullish? Yes, the white is bullish. The wave is bullish. The momentum line is above zero. Our zero line, we can just um, imagine it to be right here where those, uh, where those dots are. That's the zero line for this momentum line. So if it's below it, the momentum is hitting down. If it's above it, momentum, momentum is bullish. So sometimes it can be curving down. It, it doesn't matter to me. As long as it's above these, um, these dots here, I'm good. So all of these things matched up. Confluence was there. And that was a safe trade, right? And if you want it to be safe, um, this long candle here, you could have put your stop loss there or however you want to trade your stop loss. That's all up to you. We trade or we do stop losses based off of ATR, which is average true range. So looking at, um, let me get this off here. Looking at over here, this is the OLO. Um, the average true range was $2.65. Say it was, say it was $2.65 right over here where you trade it. Um, $2.65. One, two, so somewhere down here is where your stop loss would have been. And if you explain, have, explain what the average true range is, Dorian. Um, that is pretty much how much that stock moves per day. So the, the ATR that I have in this watch list, this is based on a 14 day average. So every 14 or the, this is an accumulation of 14 days, it moves only about $2.65 up or down. So you just make that mental make that mental note and put your stop loss in when you're um, when you're um, doing your call or put. But um, the the rule of thumb is for these for these calls and puts with this TTM. Um, if it's like two or three ATRs away, which is um, two, four, six, um, six and some change um, dollars away. That's where you want to take profit. So it definitely, it definitely did that. Because if you if you got in right when everything uh, followed confluence, so this was thirty eight dollars. If we're talking six dollars, thirty eight. Um, 
Yeah, it, it definitely met that. So you would have profited and it would have still continued up even after you uh, took profit. And it looks like it's still continuing. Now, this is just the hour time frame. Like I said, this happens on the, the daily, uh, the five minute, the one minute, it doesn't matter. So uh, without getting too technical, I'll show you um, what what my charts look like. So this is this is how I trade. Um, I got six different time frames, starting with the week, day, four hour, two hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute, and one minute. So all of this is just pretty much uh, you looking at like Google Maps all at one time, zoomed all the way out on top of the globe and zoomed all the way in to the top of your house. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to see um, you want to see the trend happening. Um, John Carter explains it's um, it's like a fuse. So on the, the one minute, you will see things like if this was all red, you will see that one minute um, turn red to um, dark red and then it would go to white and then um, the five minute would do the same thing. So it's just boom, 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 boom. And it just it lights up like a fuse until a bomb just goes off. So we, we're looking for confluence like that. And that's why that's why you're looking at all of these different labels and stuff like once you get familiar with what things correspond to is is reading is reading the book and it's, it's pretty simple. Um, now, with this scan here, um, this is a better example, because this scan shows me um, I'll pull up the scan so we can so we can see it. So I'm saying with this scan, show me all stocks that have at least 300,000 um, 300, volume. So 300,000 people trading it per day. Um, on top of that, it needs to have a million dollar market cap. This is telling me find the stocks with um, the EMA is already stacked. So this filters out all of us looking for stocks like with the big watch list scrolling down to see or clicking through each one to see are they stacked, are they not stacked? that eliminates that right there right off the bat this finds the atr the average true range of at least two dollars or more so that means we're not finding no penny stocks we're gonna find something that moves at least two dollars so we're gonna get our bread um and then on top of that this shows us rising histogram uh value now this right here was the game changer for um the lady that we had originally found this from uh dr b because um, what that shows is we're finding the move before it happens. We're, we're getting into that fuse as it's happening because what it's doing is showing us, I'll show you visually, is showing us the stocks that on a daily time frame. so a lot of, a lot of volume, a lot of money, um, a lot of probability in our direction is showing us stocks that are rising out of this weak bearish momentum to at least a two bar confirmed um, bullish momentum. So we see only stocks that have that second bar on a daily time frame. That right there was gold to her and she was selling it for like $400. I'm like, I know how to code. I watched some videos, I figured it out. Like I'm not paying that, but <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Good job, cuz. <laughs> It's out there, you know what I'm saying? Like people, people really be trying to get over. It. It's it, you ain't got to do all that. Like if it's if it's information, you can teach somebody how to make a million dollars. Only only three people out of a hundred are gonna try to do it. So just give it to the people. So looking at this, um, one thing that she has seen and that John Carter has seen is if that stock is too extended like this, I make note of that because it's following all my criteria. We see that it's fired off. It's been in at least a five dot squeeze. That momentum line is bullish. It's stacked. You see what I'm saying? Like all of this is following our rules, but it's a little overextended for me. Some people may take that trade or, or try to scalp it. But uh, what I'm seeing is that may kind of dip down, try to find previous support. That looks like the most previous support because that candle and this candle right here both tried to break through that level and it couldn't, and then it finally burst through with this long engulfing candle. Um, that's just, you know, candlestick um, 101. So I see it with this doji right here, trying to come down to test that level, which 
may become, which may happen on our launching pad. Now they say take trades that's like at the eight or the 21. So if price comes down here and touches off this 21, that's probably where I'll enter. And it may happen right around, right around here. So maybe in a couple of days, we'll look for that trade to finally take off. But it's too extended for me right now. So that's where that's where having, you know, a little trade um, and market structure uh, knowledge comes into play. Right. Um, hey, Dory, let me let me add, go right back to that calendar. And, and um, this is something that we can add on that uh, example right there. He's using the term it's too extended. And that means that it's that that last is too far extended away from the eight. Mm -hmm. And we know we know that as soon as we get in, guess what's going to happen? It's going to retrace, and we're red. You 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 one hundred and eight dollars yeah. in in negative, and now you got to wait around, and you may not have enough ex expiration time. Yeah. So basically, right. yeah. we can use the tools that we have. You can you can get in this trade, and I'm watching videos today on what you sent me, Dorian, and the guy saying, "Listen, the setup is there. Trust the setup, especially if you find it on the daily scan." or even a weekly scan, you got even more time. Mm -hmm. And you can go in here in this example, everything fits the criteria and open it up and set you a limit order with GTC. A good to close, a good to cancel. And it'll sit there working until this stock comes back down to that, what Dorian called that launching pad, which is right there between that eight and that 21. So you find out what the 21 EMA is right there and you go in and set a limit order. And you can open it up for three, four weeks. It's fine. And just come back and check the structure uh, every day or every two days or whatever. This guy made, he was showing he made $80,000 in, a, in, a, in his PL day. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So most of these you find, they may be extended. It's just your risk tolerance. Do you want to jump in there? Or you, do you have enough expiration to ride it out? Because we know it's going to retrace to pump. They all retrace. No, nothing goes straight up. So when it's extended like that, we do wait or try to wait for a pullback. But I'm going to implement what I learned today. I'm just going to start setting some uh, good to cancels and just find the structures and forget about it. Yeah. So go right ahead. I wanted to put that in right there. Oh, now you're good. I'm trying to see what's going on. It looked like my screen froze. I also wanted to say while you work with that for the um, for the uh, Cormisha and Sab Sabrina, when you guys doing the um, the trades that you do, I can't it's, it's slip in my mind. The um, spreads. The spreads. Basically, everything that Delos and Dorian is showing you all is trend. And you can find strong trend. There's a lot of spread traders that use this. I'm using this for the uh, cash cover puts that Delos is sharing. It's told us our bread and butter. I can know where my entries are on the call side. I can see trend uh, for a week. You, so you can be creative with this. Many people use this for their spreads. Now you can you now you know which way the trend is going. You can get nestled right up against it, or based on your um, you know your um, how comfortable you are with it. So all we're doing is identifying strong trend probability, and it doesn't matter puts or calls. We stack up these oscillators and there's four or five confirmations. And then the way Dorian has coded this is go time when you see what you see. Hey, Dorian, if you need me to uh, go back to mine, I can. Yeah, let me stop sharing. I'm, I'm going to pull it back up. All right. Just let me know when you're ready, sir. All right. Because I was going to show everybody. Uh... Go ahead. I think I'll just stop sharing. Okay. All right. Um, so this script to be out there, um, you will actually, this will actually, you'll be able to go back and view this. And if anybody needs any help, uh, we may have to do like a little one-on-one -on -one type deal or, or, or build one from scratch while we're on the call next Thursday. Since everybody knows what it is, right? We can, we can have everybody just step through step by step by step. Uh, maybe get Dorian back on here. I ain't going to speak for his time, but if he could, uh, yeah. Just walk everybody through next week how you have it set up. That way, everybody can get the same screen, have the same view. Like I said, Dorian Dorian has put a lot of time 
and effort into into how he has his set up and and so I kind of just did the the uh the cheated version but I started writing some of my own script and so I did one for my watch list which I'm about to show you but I also wanted to show you something so the other way I was using it is Tesla Ultra Beauty uh Shopify there's a lot of heavy hitters uh that that the average true range on those and some of them are 15, 16 bucks. And so Tesla being one of them, I'm gonna go back. I wanna, I just wanted to show this and then I'm gonna get this back to Dorian. Um, let me do, I'm gonna change this up so I can get the day. Stop. Um, so as an example, we got, and this was at on 729 to 8 o'clock. So that's right before the market open. This is at market open. But you can see even just a random, I just randomly went to Tesla, and you can see it one, two, three, four, five days, and then it fired. And like I said, I'm waiting till one, two, three. I got a shot. My screen it froze, so I had to restart it. Oh, are you are you good now? Oh, my bad. Hey, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I'm gonna go on mute real quick. Mine is pulling back up, though. Okay, and so you can see right here after those five red dots, you can see what happened. Like anybody that got in a trade, and for the most part, uh, I didn't, I wasn't uh, familiar with Dorian's set of rules there that he had, which which you know I'll start using it, but. When I since I got that TTM scalper on there, you can you can almost ride this until the scalper tell you to get out of it. And so right here, you got your indicators. The green bars are heavy. It's in the direction that it's needed. It's it's all trading over the uh, exponential moving averages. And and if you just stayed in this, I mean the the this little white arrow says, hey, it's time to the momentum is starting to, to fade away. Uh, Dorian has his color coded a different color, but this dark blue means the same as Dorian's little black one that he had on his list. So his white was the the uh, bullish momentum, and then as it started to turn or faded, that little gray color or whatever he had, it's still bullish, but it's bullish is starting to turn. Like the so the volume may not be there anymore, or there's something that's saying, hey, uh, people are leaving this the, these these calls or leaving these, uh, you know, the stock, they're trading it a little less than they were just, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago, or whatever the case is, or whatever indicator you have. But once it changed colors, it kind of tells you, hey, the, 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 uh, the power of it is starting to lessen a little bit. And with that scalpel on there, man, I, when I found that, I was like, wow, because I, I did it for like two weeks, like just saw if that was real and like, did it happen or when did the arrows come? And I was like, man, these little arrows kind of like right on. And so I was like, you know, starting to use it more and more and more. But it is, it's a, it's a powerful thing. And I think uh, we can all benefit from having it. Um, like I said, I, I uh, take my hat off to Dorian and Jiro. They kind of like beta tested this thing to the point where um, I think Dorian started giving out the plays. And some of the plays are some of the, uh, uh, discords and that are out there kind of do the same thing. They provide the same service, but with this tool, uh, you can almost quarterback like your own. And you, you know, if you want to be a part of a Discord, absolutely. I mean, they're they are interesting. They're fun to be part of, and there is a lot of good information that goes out. Uh, a lot of a lot of it, you know, is the availability of making making the trade like why you're at work, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times things come out, you're in the middle of summer or on a phone call and you just can't get it right at that moment. But just knowing that, hey, you can go in at night and filter and kind of look and see what may be what may be brewing. And, and that's what I did uh, on a scalping. Uh, I did it with Jiro just the uh, other day where I basically, I scalped uh, Roku because I was just following the red dots. And so it hadn't fired yet, but I'm like, hey, by tomorrow, it's going to give me, it's going to show its face, like, because it was already at, like, three dots. 
So I was like, hey, I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting in it. And that joke of fire green and I hopped on it. It was a $3 move. And then it was like, as soon as I got out, you know, the, the even the scalping arrows told me, indicated, hey, it's, it's turning. So I got out, but it was just 300 bucks, but it was just, it was $300 that I didn't have, you know, and it only took me 15 minutes for that, for that to come true. So I, I've used it quite a bit. And so I want to share this while Dorian is still loading because he's got some other stuff that he wants to talk through, but I wanted to just share this, how I, how I have this set up. So on my watch list over to the left, basically I, I just wrote a script, right? And I've been writing script and, and I'm not nowhere near uh, Dorian's level of script writing. So uh, if you call and ask me for a script, I probably won't be able to help you other than what I've been toying with. But um, Carmisha asked me for a script about seven months ago. And I kind of, I, I don't know if I avoided her on purpose, but I was like, what the heck is she talking about? <laughs> So, so she was like, Dello, send me your script. And I'm thinking, this, what is she, this girl done jumped off the bridge. And so I was like, I didn't know what she was talking about. So now I can send her a script, right? I, I now have things that I've wrote. And so I wrote one for my watch list and I see Dorian's back up. So Dorian, I'm gonna just show this and then I'll hand it back to you. Uh, so on this, on this watch list, you can see next to my watch list, you have indicators that says buy short, Bye, bye. So it's telling me what to do, right? It's kind of like dumbing it down for me. So I wrote this script basically. Um, let me see here. Let me edit this thing. Nope. Hold on. So matter of fact, let me do it this way. So this is my formula that I wrote to get me what you see on the left over there. And so basically, it's just a basic script, right? And so like, um, I took some of it from another script, right? So they were, they just had different moving averages. And I said, those moving averages to me kind of were too far out there. So I kind of wanted to bring mine closer. So basically, I like, I like a, a nine day moving average because because anybody that like in the last six or seven months that has heard me say I stopped trading options on I stopped trading options on on Monday because it was just you got the weekend news and then you just got so many things that could could turn the tide right and so I would I would find myself missing out on some of the upward trend up upward trends and I would be in the money by the end of the day on a Monday. So I was like, let me just wait. And so I'm like, I'm a, I'm a week in two days. So I like to do every Tuesday. So I just put my, I wanted to see what was a bull, uh, a bullish move and a bearish move on my EMA when the nine crosses the 20. So I didn't want to do, you know, other people got different stuff that they use. And then I wanted to know, hey, within eight bars, and it's kind of similar to what Doria has with some of his bars, that they count, right? So this is just a script that I wrote and this is what it gives me. Over here to the left, it's basically telling me, so in these, the, these are the stocks right here that I have and what it, what it does is if, I, if I'm holding any of these stocks in my portfolio, if I'm doing like options with them, it's telling me, hey man, you wanna short these stocks. Then it's also telling me, hey, you may want to look at buying these stocks. But even though it's giving me that buy signal, I'm still using the TTM squeeze, the RSI. I still use all those other indicators to see, even though it's telling me to buy it, I don't want to just buy it at the peak. I want to just, I still want to use my consensus of what I know to say, hey, if I'm going to buy it, I still want to buy it at the best price. I still want to take my time and go through the motions. But I can send anybody this this script that I wrote, and it can be easily changed. And I'll show you just how easy this is, right? This is, like I said, it looks like rocket science, but it really isn't. So I'm gonna turn this blue bar to say a different color. So just right here, right? If it's bullish, then color dot blue. I'm gonna just put color dot yellow. 
And then I am going to hit apply and okay. And that's just how easy that is. So when you write a script, it's just a matter of playing with it, right? Like, like Dorian actually knows what he's going in to say. I kind of got a, I'm still getting a feel for it, but it's part of my class now. So I'm starting to get a little bit more familiar with it, but it's just that simple. You know, if I want to, if I, and if I change, I can change these, these, these bars to whatever I want it to be. So you can go in here and you can play around with this and you can turn this, you can, you can really uh, turn what you already know into a, um, into, to, into something, into something really awesome. And the more we do this, the more we grow. I mean, and that's what, that's what this is about, right? So somebody might say, well, Dolos, why you didn't tell me about this a year ago? Cause I didn't know. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't share anything. I don't know, but I'm still learning myself. And that's, and so as soon as this was brought to my attention, I immediately was like, man, I got to try this out. But I, I picked up on a lot of stuff from being in a discord too, that like people were using this. But like Doria said, they want to charge you for every little thing, right? So they wouldn't share it. So um, I just wanted to share that, that I can send that script out in a text. It's just, a, it's just, you can type it in, you can copy and paste it, however you want to do it. But it is really that simple. And what Dorian is about to show you, hopefully next week we can get Dorian on here and we can set up everybody's laptop to, to look like his. And I'm going to give it back to you, Dorian. Sir, yes, sir. It, um, it really is simple. Um, a lot of the script that I coded um, was just a combination of like a million different things. Um, I was just piecing the puzzle together um, until I stopped getting errors. So I'm still learning myself and a lot of stuff I picked up on YouTube as well. So it's not difficult. Um, can you guys see my screen again? Yep. Okay. Um, and I also have um, like a whole uh, Google document with everything broken down. If you want to manually insert this yourself, like if you want to um, start getting the feel of importing these scripts yourself and coding them yourself, or I have another option where you can literally just click the link that's inside of that, that document and it self installs into your Thinkorswim app. So all you would have to do once you installed it is come over to your scan, um, you go to stock hacker and under stock hacker um if this loads up geez, here we go under stock hacker um you would find it here you say load load scan query and it pulls up right under here all of these purple spirals you can see how, how much i've been testing um how many different scans i've made and it's only like two or three that i only use now but um yeah, in that document, um, once we get everything organized, everybody will have access to that. And on top of that, um, yeah, we can come up with a date where we can sit down and customize all of these, um, your your uh, charts. Um, same thing with the chart. Um, like once you set it up one time, um, you can literally save it. So me hitting right click, I can go to style. Um, where is it? Load style. And there is mine, Kale setup. So when I click that, it'll load up on any chart that I have. The only thing that I have to do is change my uh, time frame aggregation. And even even if you wanted to make your own time frame, um, you can come in here and customize because I'm seeing a lot of people trade on ticks now rather than um, the preset um, day, two hour, four hour. Um, I'm just used to this. I'm used to my time frames, the day, four hour, and stuff. Like I said, I trade for it, and those are the, the popular times. Um, but it's, it, you can customize a lot. Um, I'm not gonna hold you guys a little no more because I know it's been a lot of information, but just to show you my watch list, um, this shows us ATR. Um, well, let me show you this one. Uh, so it shows the symbol, your ATR of that symbol, and then it's showing each, uh, um, each week squeeze. So week, day, four, two hour, one hour, is showing us did the week fire off. So let's just match this up. I'll pull up snow and uh, you can see it visually. So it says F3, so that means fired three green dots long, meaning to the upside. And we see right here, one, two, three. 
So that matches up. And then it says it's in a squeeze for seven days on um, on the daily time frame. And then we can see the red dot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So going back to our notes, um, we're looking for at least a five dot squeeze minimum um, before fire um, for one of our for one of our conditions. So you can literally just scan over here on the left side um, before you even open up a stock to see like what you wanna look at. Um, this next part shows us our EMA stack. Now these are always gonna be um, fully stacked because our scan is showing us um, only stocks that have stacked EMAs. Um, and then these, these are our histograms. So looking at snow, um, you can't see it because it's highlighted, but that means this, um, these bars right here, this histogram um, is showing white all across the board. That's what the two means. So week, day, uh, four hour, two hour, one hour. So this is week, day, four hour, two hour, and one hour. Each one of these has the white histogram. So like I said, you can just do this scan visually over here on your watch list. And mind you, once we import these watch lists, they automatically update. So you'll never have to do this again, like customizing all of this stuff. I'll show you what mine looks like. It's crazy. Once you got all of this stuff customized and implemented in, um, you'll never have to do it. Well, with the watch list, yeah, you do. Unless I find a way for you to uh, just download it and it loads up. Otherwise, we'll we'll sit down on, on the Zoom and set everybody up with this. But um, once this watch list is set up, um, it's pulling from our scan. And just to show you what that looks like, um, those scans that I showed you, you would just come in here and click the one that you created or the one that you downloaded. And every day is going to automatically populate throughout the day. Like I get bells all throughout the day because I set alerts on the um, on my watch list. So every time one comes in, I get a ding on my computer and on my phone is a notification like uh, FRC has been added to the TTM 5.squeeze watch list. So um with the I'll, I'll put the descriptions of what each one of these are because these are the three that i've been working off of i love this tt and bag one because that's the one that shows me the rising histogram um on the daily time frame those are very volatile and they they typically move um for at least eight or more uh daily candles in my direction um this eight and 34 cross um you see how this one isn't showing my emas um stack but at least it gives me a visual of some other conditions that I'm looking for. So looking at this today, ASNB got approved. Um, some, some vaccine got approved by the FDA, but um, what it's showing me is on the daily time frame that eight, eight, the eight uh, EMA crossed the 34. And typically uh, when that happens, that means a trend change uh, based off um, John Carter's words. So, you can see already on the daily time frame it fired off. This was like a, a thirty dollar gain. It was crazy um, what that FDA approval did. It did the same thing to uh, Pfizer the other day, but it's too extended. So I'm looking for this to come down. And uh, like my dad said, we can probably set a a, a, a buy limit right here. Um, uh, good to close. I'm I still haven't played with those yet, so I'm gonna get with you to see um, how I can do that. But this is a little too extended for me, but we already know because that eight EMA crossed over that 34 because that scan is only pulling those, um, those stocks. We already know that this is something that we can keep our eye on and just looking at it on, on the one hour, we can see it opened up like that today and it's starting to hit down. So um, it's nothing that I'm interested in right now, but it's something to keep our eye on. So. I'm just playing with different things. And once you get in here and see how these scans work, you'll be able to customize these on your own because it's, it's nothing to just add and delete, um, you know, different lines of code. Um, but yeah, for the most part, without uh, overloading you guys too much, this is what we're doing. It's, it's, it's easy to understand, um, especially if you have a set, a set um, rules, like those, those five rules that I showed you. And I'll pull them up again just in case somebody didn't get it. Um, so yeah, like I, I even have this, uh, posted right in front of me on a, um, on a flash card. So before I even go into my app and click call or put, I'm, I'm making sure that the majority of these are, um, are checked off or other conditions that, you know, I know based off of price action or candlestick action, if everything, the more confluence, the better. 
you know, but um, most most importantly, like I'm starting to see if it's no, if it hasn't been like a, at least a five dot squeeze, um, then it's no trade for me. And it's kind of hard to go against the grain, especially like when I know like I can catch this real quick, I can catch that real quick. Just don't go against the grain, especially first starting out. But um, you can you can really be consistent. That's what we want to. That's what you want to be. Rather than focusing on profitability at first, work on consistency and positioning. And that's you just being disciplined with these rules um, because all of the work is done for you. These scans, these scans are going to give you exactly what you need. The parents that you need, you just have to follow it up with the conditions that that have been already proven to be profitable. So um, that's my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess we can open it up for questions. Um, I know we kind of went over a lot, but if anybody has any questions, I'm I'm still available. Yeah, I have a question. When are you doing individualized tutoring? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am actually um I'm doing a lot. Um it is coming. I'm not I won't I won't be offering like one-on-one tutoring off off the bat. It will be more like a course type of thing. Um, but it will offer it with that course, um, members will be, have that access to jump on live with me. Um, so I'm still figuring out that schedule. Um, but yeah, yeah. As I become more profitable with this, um, it's, it's, it's really leading me in that direction. And, um, I want to get you guys set up at first, like before I do anything, I want to make sure that I can help somebody that, um, that hasn't seen this, um, to become profitable um, before I even, you know, launch to the public. So um, I guess, I guess you guys would be my, my first students <laughs> and I'm learning from you guys as well. This is, this is new territory for me. So anything, anybody finds out, let's all just put our heads together. Thanks Dorian. Yes ma'am. Yeah, definitely appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Oh yeah. This was oh, yeah. good. This was real good. It's a lot. <laughs> it is, man. Oh my god! You got all, charts, got all those charts up there, man. But <laughs> I hate it. I, I just hate not knowing. Like, but once I saw the money, I was like, okay. If yeah. all I got to do is just sit down and take some notes, okay, cool. I, I must do it. But I want to. Uh, I want to underscore that it, it's a lot of information, guys. But um, I'm, I, I've taped this. Number one, you know how we do on the on the channel. And I'll try to get it up tomorrow. And number two, man, it's so much information on TTM Squeeze that once we started looking it up, I was like, how did I go a whole year and not heard, not know anything about EMAs? Of course, we knew SMAs, simple moving average. But when you're dealing with EMAs, as we initially learned, those are reactions to the market. Those are that's what's what's happened already. The EMAs now we're we're exponential um, moving average traders now, and these indicators now are are the next best thing to real time. So uh, it's a different strategy. Uh, our bread and butter is still what Delos taught us initially, but I'm merging this with that as well. And um, this may not be for everybody, but it's something that we, we certainly wanted to put out there on the table because everybody's different traders. Some people are more conservative. Other people, uh, Dana, go for it and keep. <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, whose attention we caught and uh, how, you, how you plan to implement this, if at all. Delos, what you got? You're on mute, Delos. Come off of mute. My bad, my bad, y'all. Um, I, I was gonna just say if if everybody could be on next week, so we can kind of get you uh get your computer set up. Uh, if you can't make it, then we'll probably have to set up another time. But I was gonna say the earlier the better, because uh you you're gonna you're gonna have some things fire fire this week, and and if you and if and if you don't want to miss out on it, you know, we, we definitely want to get you get your get your laptop set up. And like I said, they 
you, you don't have to reset it every time. It's kind of like set it and forget it and then just start understanding uh, what you're looking at. And so we'll use every call after everybody get it set up as a, as a call to, to kind of talk through a little bit at a time until you, until you get it down. But we may also too start sharing like what may fire just for you to go look at and do your own due diligence. But hey, this is firing, right? So you can go in and kind of go, oh, I see it, you know, that type of thing. So um, we can start sharing some of that in the uh, in the group chat. Yeah, also let me add, also let me add, instead of trying to just knock the door down in an hour and a half and get everybody set up, that, that may be a tougher task than we really think it is. Um, we can almost ease into it with, you know, some people do understand, you know, obviously how to go to a Google Drive and, and obviously look at the video because Dorian did put together a video and we can we can share the Google Drive. I mean, Keith got set up, you know what I'm saying? So uh, we can almost kind of ease in. People have almost. Now they can understand. Hey, G, you breaking up. I'll go over here to come. Yeah, up, girl, you, up, you girl. froze. You frozen. Uh, let me know when I come back. Am I back? Am I back? Uh, Am I just back? a little bit. Just a little bit. You can try it. Am I back? Am I back? You can try it. Okay. All right. I don't know if I'm back. Well, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yep. we can we can hear you now. You back a little bit, but okay, you, okay. you know. Okay, I was just saying that we could we can add people to the Google Drive so that they can begin to play around with and and start to hear the language a little bit more before we all just come in on Thursday and try it for the first time. Because some of some of us are you know then they may be like you know, let me take a stab at you know um, uploading this like he said because the directions are pretty simple. Um, but you know it is it is a little bit cumbersome when you learn it for the first time, and I'm fearful that if we all try to get on Thursday, what that may look like for the first time. Yeah, um, stepping through it though, I think in addition to having it watch that video may be better, so it may be advantageous to watch the video. Um, but 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 just stepping through it, Gerald, uh, step by step. I think that uh, think that'd be helpful. I mean, a lot, a lot. Yeah, More, I, think, I think I think so too. I think so. I just didn't know what it would look like for the first time if um, nobody really kind of looked at it and just came back a week from now with the step by step. But I mean, yeah, we can. I th I think we can get through it. We, let's do both. I'm yeah, just saying, let's do both. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm suggesting. Do you? Do, I know uh, Aunt Jeanette got everybody's uh, email address, so she can send it out to everybody, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll add everybody into that Google Drive tonight. And I um, also had plans on recording for this whole setup, uh, like step by step, um, to have done at least by Saturday. So all of that can go into Google Drive. The scripts can go in there the links to download the script. So like um, my dad said, if y'all want to download it and have it ready, that's perfectly fine. The tutorial will be in there if you wanted to have it up before we next meet, or if you just want to wait, um, we'll walk it through. But um, at least that option will be there beforehand. And yeah. I can add everybody in there. I think that's best. That'd be cool. All right, y'all with it? Good. Yeah, that's cool. cool. That works. Good, good. All right. Well, uh, we'll get the emails. I don't know if there's anything else left to cover, Delos. If you got something, I'm pulling in, and so I'm gonna be um, my hands about to be full. And so I do. I think we got enough people on. So I want to say this. So uh, I know I got busy, but in the background, I kind of kept my feet moving underwater. So. Um, um, I, I did speak to an attorney. Uh, I did give him the green light to kind of 
go ahead and get us set up, right? So I don't want that conversation to leave. So hopefully in the next two weeks, that'll be that'll be done. I was gonna have them get on the uh, on the Zoom call just in case anybody wanted to ask any questions. Um, he he basically just wants me to sign something, basically saying that I'm giving him permission to represent us. We we should never need an attorney, really, but I just think that it'd be wise to have him file it. He did say that uh, filing it probably be best as an LLC. Uh, it's the least risk for any of us to take. So I told him that I would share it. He and he offered, hey, I'll get on the call. I told Gerald this about a couple of weeks ago, but. I just want to make sure that I'm staying transparent with everybody, especially those who sent their money. Uh, and once we get that set up, um, we are going to go ahead and get the TD Ameritrade account and get that whole thing rolling. And then from there, hopefully we can, uh, I can work with Dorian or get Dorian and back the information that we need. I know it's been a while though. And I apologize y'all my, between my job and this school, kind of threw me out for a loop, but uh, get with Dorian, get Dorian the information that he needs to uh, get the merchandise, uh, e-commerce uh, thing set up for us. Uh, and then we'll be off and rolling. But I, I know I quickly need to get that behind me, but I didn't just want it, the conversation to leave. I know we haven't spoke about it in a while. Uh, the lawyer did was like, hey, I'll get on next week. But next week, I would rather everybody do this than that. But if you got any specific questions or if anybody got any concerns, then I'll just have them hop on. We ask those questions, then we move on with this TTM. But he is willing to get on the Zoom call with us. Uh, like I said, we really wouldn't need an attorney for any legal thing because we just selling shirts or whatever. But um, it is nice to just have somebody that, you know, if we had to ask a question, you know, we can, we got somebody. But uh, his fee is minimum. So I'm like, hey, I'll take care of that, no big deal. Just go ahead and get it filed. And um, I haven't given him anybody's information yet. And the information that's gonna be given is just gonna be your full name, the same information uh, we sent on Jeanette. So if anybody is opposed to it, I'm gonna go ahead and have them set it up. If anybody needs to ask questions, um, you can put it in a group chat. I'll ask him, we can get the answer back to you. But he was saying that the LLC mm -hmm. was better than a partnership in this case, so. And that is all that I have today. Everybody else good? Let's Everybody go stand, stand safe? Yep. All, right. Yep. all right, well, look forward to seeing everybody back here next Thursday, because we got a lot of exciting stuff, man. I think I think this uh, get everybody mojo flowing again. Um, I want to thank Dorian for getting on and the time that he put into it. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. You. Yeah, thank so you. Dorian, Dorian, Dorian has uh, spent quite a bit of time, man, chopping a tree down on this thing, and I think he's got it to the point where uh, we can all utilize it and ask questions about it. But uh, everybody, be safe during the week. Any questions you got for the attorney? Uh, please te either text them to me. Everybody has my number. Text them to me. I'll put them in a group chat. I'll ask him and get the answer back to you all as soon as possible. But I'm looking to have this thing filed. It, it's pretty simple. Um, but now that we have a direction to go in, uh, we can get that thing. And, and that, like I said, it's, it's pretty simple stuff, uh, getting that LLC uh, outlined. And then uh, from there, it's just uh, going ahead and get TD Ameritrade account set up and let me get this check out of my savings account. So before my wife book a trip to Cabo with it. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't want that to die on the vine. I know with this school, I kind of picked the wrong time to go into school. And then this TTM squeeze came and now I'm losing sleep. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> in the morning, man, I'm like, Lord Jesus, I don't think I can take anything else. <laughs> um, we'll be on the call next Thursday. Everybody be safe. Uh, have a have a good week and any questions, man, just throw them out there. And I am going to try it, right? I'm going to try to find one that fires it off uh, this week. I'm going to put it in the uh, in the WhatsApp. And, and like I said, take the advice and go look at it first, you know, and kind of so you can see what I see. Or Gerald and Gerald and Doria might do the same thing, y'all. But it's just it's just a, a recommendation to go view it, not a recommendation to 
take a loan out at the bank and go for the dust. <laughs> don't, do don't do that. And uh, check out Dr. B's YouTube channel. She speaks the same language that you heard today, all about the squeeze. It gives you a more comprehensive look, and you got videos of what she's doing. That's the discord that I've been in probably for about a month. Dr. B, as in, B as uh, in Victor, as boy. in baby, okay. B as in boy, B as in boy, YouTube channel again, same language, everything you heard today. Um, yeah. and she goes into uh, uh, detail as well, very, very comprehensive. Yep, and she'll she she has no qualms about telling you. She's making all her money before 10 o'clock and she's done with the market. Yeah, yeah, in yeah and out. boy, she be done. She day trading gets out. <laughs> what does she trade? She trade options, she trading futures, forex, what? Option. No, she's doing this. She swing trade, she day trading and, and swing trade every now and then, but she day trade with the histogram. With, with, the with stocks, yeah. Squeeze. Yeah, wow. she just she just you make she just using common stocks, Jeff. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, everybody have a good blessed week. We will see you back here on Thursday, everybody. All right, y'all. All right. Thank you, man. Be safe. Be safe. Have a good night.